The dawns were fantastic, but I didn't see any of them. I was still having trouble with the early starts. The temperature was usually about minus five and there was ice on everything, so you couldn't really blame me. On some of the walks, we heard quite a bit about how fragile this whole area is. They reckon there's been a lot of damage done by cattle grazing up there over the last hundred years. That's supposed to be stopped around Mount Howitt in a couple of years' time, but Jono said there's a lot of other areas where it's still going to be loud. It didn't sound right to me. Sounds like Aborigines did a lot less damage. I hadn't really imagined them in that sort of area before, but Andrew knew a lot about it. It's uh, been populated for 40 to 100,000 years. Let me give you an example here. There's just some very young streaks of what they call native pepper. If you try one of these leaves, it tastes just like pepper, although the Aboriginals didn't come up here to eat the native pepper. They came here for the bogong moth. Every year in summer, hundreds and hundreds of Aboriginals will gather right here. In fact, this area is very important because it was a tribal boundary of four tribes. They used to pick the moths off the rocks and then they'd catch them in a bark dish, pull the wings off them, shake all the dust off and then pound them into a paste. And then with that paste, they'd either eat it raw or they'd cook it. And it's delicious. It sort of has this uh, sort of savoury honey flavour. And they're all in this area, and they used to come. This was neutral ground, so you can imagine the scene with bonfires and people feasting on moths. I could manage without the moths, but I think we're all starting to get the feeling that there was something about this place. It seemed even better when you got away by yourself. I think it'd be fun. I'll be okay just for transport. They'd be okay to sort of bring them up just for packs and yeah. that. I reckon the only way you should get up here is by camping like we're doing. Hey, look, more hikers. Good day. Good day. Hi. Where are you from? Oh. We just come up from Canberra Way. Canberra? Canberra? That's not far. Four weeks. Four Four weeks. I couldn't believe it. These people had been out walking for four weeks. I felt like I'd been away for that long after a few days. How long have you been doing this sort of thing? Oh, well, I guess, what would you be, 16, 17? Since uh, a few years before, since before you were born. So it's a while now. Like, the country looked a bit different then. You didn't cross any roads, whereas now you go through the logging country and you've got to, you want to put your head down and just keep walking and get through that country as quickly as possible. And of course, then you hardly saw any people around either, like you'd hardly ever meet another group of people. So um, you've missed out a bit on that, I guess. The thing about Victoria now, though, is there's not many wilderness areas left. Like, these are really only small wilderness areas. That night was the coldest of the trip. It was a bit depressing too. If things were changing as fast as those women said, what was going to be left in another 20 years or so?
I usually get a headache if I think too much. But the time I'd spent up there had really started things turning. I was beginning to wish that I didn't have to go back to the city so soon, and I think the others felt the same. Oh, I really enjoyed it. I loved, it. loved um, you know, really wrapping it up here once. <laughs> up here, you find that you matter more. It's not like you're just part of a, a great big city network that you've got to operate in. You can, you can be yourself up here, and, um, and you can discover a lot of things about yourself. I think, you know, it's sort of good that you get to see it. I think it's worthwhile that everyone gets a chance to see it and they shouldn't wreck it by logging and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. You need to be able to see it before you just, you know, because before you've actually come up here and you hear all the, these greenies and stuff, you know, going on about the up here and you think, oh, you know, they're just a bunch of, yeah, you know, but before you've actually seen yeah. it, you, you don't, you, you, think that's, you think that's what they are, but until you've seen it, you understand just what, what it means to them and what the value you, you know, in it there is. It's so beautiful and no one has the right to take that away. It belongs to everyone. No one should have the right to touch it at all. It should be just left as it is. Yeah, but then what do, you, what do we do then? Like, I mean, we've got to, we've got to get you. I mean, your this is stuff. the last bit of wilderness we've got left. As Andrew was saying, I mean, They've just populated all, most of the other high country and destroyed a lot of the other high country and this is the main bit that we've got left. It felt strange to be packing up. I don't think any of us were too wrapped to be going. Probably sounds a bit corny, but I felt like I'd left a bit of myself back in those mountains. I knew I'd be back there again one day. <laughs>